Hello, how are you? Welcome to the second part of the video, Some Characters That Deserve a Better Storyline in Full Metal Alchemist. If you haven't seen the first part, the link will come up, or you can check it in the description section of the video. If you love the world of anime, be sure to subscribe and set the bell to all. Let's start the video. Pinako Rockwell's character is well designed but her arc feels somewhat scattered. Pinako Rockwell is an unquestionable badass. She raises her son and her granddaughter while simultaneously earning a name for herself in the field of automail engineering. She was once known as the Leopardess of Resemble, a badge of honor signifying her unrelenting willpower and grit. Pinako's grandmotherly presence helps Ed and Al heal from their human transmutation experiment and she promises them a home whenever they need one. Her character is exceptionally well designed and fleshed out but her arc feels somewhat scattered. Isaac McDougall's fascinating storyline is cut short in the very first episode. The freezing alchemist Isaac McDougall is an anime-only character appearing in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. His moral compass goes haywire during the Ishwalan crisis and eventually shatters, explaining why he carries so much hatred for the military. Unable to tolerate a mysteries, warmongering policies, and colonizer mindset, McDougall unleashes his ice alchemy on Central Command. He barely escapes with his life after Edward and Alphonse defeat him, only to be insta killed by for her Bradley. Douglas' storyline is cut short in the very first episode. It's unclear if Team Marco fully recovers from his emotional trauma. As a crystal alchemist, Team Marco oversees all aspects of the Philosopher's Stone creation project. His empathetic nature overcomes his scientific curiosity when he is forced to take part in the brutal conquest of Ishwal, compelling him to desert the military. Marco desperately wants to redeem himself for his indirect role in the genocide and chooses to heal the sick and wounded with the help of a stolen philosopher's stone. Marco chooses to help the Ishwalan people after father's ultimate destruction but it's unclear if he truly recovers from his emotional trauma. Sloth is essentially a mindless marionette without father. Sloth spends most of his time, perhaps most of his life, digging a network of underground tunnels below a mess trees. He presumably doesn't know the reason behind his task, which isn't surprising since father regularly treats his children like expendable trash. Sloth later turns out to be the antithesis of his name, attacking the Armstrong siblings at supersonic speeds, but even this unexpected revelation does little to save his character. Sloth is essentially a mindless marionette, he does nothing without a puppeteer manipulating his strings. Lang Fan's emotional reliance on Prince Ling Yao takes away some of her agency. Lan Fan and her grandfather Fu accompany Prince Ling to a mysteries, hoping to support his claim to the Sheng throne by retrieving a philosopher's stone. Her loyalty and devotion are incomparable to the point that she loses her composure when anyone mocks her beloved prince. Although Lan Fan's fighting skills make her a proficient bodyguard, her character largely revolves around her professional identity. 
This doesn't mean that Lam Fan doesn't have a personality of her own, but her emotional reliance on Ling takes away some of her narrative agency. So thank you for watching this video and devoting your valuable time to us. If you want to see our other videos, don't forget to tap the subscribe button. Goodbye until another video from Anime Beat.